So we are here at the Pawnee National Grassland. This wide open space is huge. There's a lot of space out here. But what exactly is a grassland? As you look out on this landscape, it looks very, very bare, except for the cattle grazing behind us. But it does look very bare. So as we find out what's happening out here, we want to learn exactly what's going on. And there's a whole lot going on out here. Grasslands can be found around the world and often are known by other names such as the North American prairies, South American pampas, Asian steppes, and African savanna. Historically, the short grass, mixed grass, and tall grass prairies covered about one-fifth of North America. To early European settlers, the grasslands seemed endless and teemed with life. Vast herds of bison thundered over the land, along with elk and other wildlife sustaining the lives of indigenous people for thousands of years. The United States acquired most of the Great Plains from France with the Louisiana Purchase of 1803. Until the late 1860s, the Great Plains region was viewed by Americans as their last frontier. The Homestead Act of 1862 enticed almost six million settlers by 1890 and encouraged them to replace grass with crops. The difficulty of plowing through the dense root systems of the sod grasses, the extremes of weather, and frequent drought tested the limits of those who would subdue the plains. The settlers soon discovered that while these vast grasslands were productive in wet years, they were also subject to periods of drought that devastated crops. By the early 1930s, the broad midsection of America was in trouble. The historic drought and winds known as the Great Dust Bowl made much of the land useless. In April 1935, dust clouds of epic proportions rose over 20,000 feet in parts of Oklahoma, Texas, Nebraska, Kansas, and Colorado. Land that should never have been plowed yielded its topsoil to incessant dry winds. Ten-foot drifts of fine soil particles piled up like snow in a blizzard, burying fences and closing roads. This led to the laws that implemented farming practices that saved the remaining soil and what was left of the grasslands. The predominant vegetation of grasslands is, of course, grass, tall, medium, and short. But the ecosystem includes much more. In addition to grass, a variety of plants, wildflowers, shrubs, and a limited variety of trees grow on grasslands, providing for humans, as well as mammals, birds, and many reptiles, amphibians, insects, and even fish. Water is an important resource throughout grasslands' habitats. Small, isolated wetlands dot the dry grasslands and prairies, providing much-needed water and supporting a diversity of plants and wildlife, including resident and migratory birds. These wetlands are called either playas or prairie potholes. Playas are shallow, temporary ponds that collect runoff from the surrounding area after heavy rains. Some dry up within days, and others contain water for weeks or months. These water sources are also important because they recharge aquifers and improve the quality of that water. Today, much of the historic range of grasslands has been developed for homes, converted to agriculture, and or used for mineral and oil extraction. Many acres of grasslands have been altered to produce food, including beef, wheat, beets, and corn. However, remnant areas of this national treasure still exist and are managed by government agencies and private landowners. You can visit these special places and enjoy the vistas and a variety of wildlife and plants. You will be taken back in time and feel the wonder of the grasslands that was and still is an important part of America's landscape and heritage. We can all appreciate and do our part to protect this natural wonder.